Hello friends, welcome back to this video on analog communication. In this video, we are going to discuss the foster CLA discriminator method. It is the type of phase discriminator method. In my previous video, I discussed two types of frequency discriminator method. First was simple slope detector and second was balance slope detector. So we have analyzed both of them in detail. Now it's the time to discuss the phase discriminator method and in that the foster Seeley discrimination method. So when I was discussing about the balance slope detector, I told you it has three tank circuit which are tuned to different frequencies and in a transformer tuning to different frequencies of three tank circuit would be very difficult to design. So here this difficulty is overcome. We are tuning it to same frequency FC. Now the second disadvantage was it was non-linear. So balance slope detectors characteristic curve was something like S which was not perfectly linear. So I can say the linearity is less. In the foster Seeley discriminator method, the linearity would be high. So first of all, we will see the circuit of the foster Seeley discriminator method. So here again, we have the input voltage which is in the form of FM modulated signal. So MFMT is my input voltage which is applied here. So it is connected to a tank circuit. So it is C, P and here we have L, P. So now it will be, I will be writing L, P inside. So this is L, P. It is coupled to the secondary transformer so now here it is center tapped secondary and here also i am using an inductor coil so now after that we have a coupling capacitor which is coupled from the input so this is the coupling capacitor it is coupled from input to the secondary so here we have the capacitor C2, sorry C1 and here we have the capacitor C2. So now as like the previous video it is connected to diode then capacitor then resistor. Here also it is connected to a diode, here to a capacitor and here to a resistor. So C dash 1 and C dash 2, this is R1, this is R2 and this is my V output T. So now in my previous video I already told you this part is converting the frequency modulated signal to amplitude modulated signal. So after that this is the envelope detector so this part is the envelope detector here we'll be having am amt amplitude modulated signal so this part is converting the fm signal to the am signal so we have gone through it various times in my previous videos as well so here we know how the working of this block should be and how the working of this block should be. So it should work like an envelope detector and it should work like a converter which is converting the frequency modulated signal to amplitude modulated signal. So now here we have this coupling capacitor. We will see the changes from the balance slope detector. It seems exactly same like the balance slope detector it just have some small changes the first change is that we have the coupling capacitor so the coupling capacitor is the first change so we'll see the advantages of coupling capacitor so the first advantage is that it is blocking the dc so it blocks the DC from primary to secondary. Now we'll see the second advantage. So it couples 
the frequency of the primary to the secondary here at the center tapped portion of the inductor so it couples primary frequency to center tapped secondary so now with the help of this coupling capacitor here i'll be having the input voltage as well so here at the coil we are having v in so now if i talk about the voltage at this diode so the induced voltage at diode would be the in voltage input voltage plus the voltage here so voltage here let's take vl2 here vl1 so at the diode the voltage would be v in plus vl2 and here it would be v in plus vl1 so we are adding the input voltage to the inductor voltage with the help of the coupling capacitor so upside will be having v in plus vl1 and downside will be having v in plus vl2 so now i hope you understood the difference between the balance slope detector and foster sele discriminator method so it's a phase discriminator method so here we'll be seeing only the phase because the frequency is constant so here it is tuned to the fc it is also tuned to fc the frequency tuning is constant we are not changing the frequency tuning so the previous drawback that we cannot couple to different frequencies it is eliminated here so now what would happen if i have the modulated signals frequency f is equal to fc so now when f is equal to fc i'll be having fc here so fc is coming here so when f is equal to fc that time so at f is equal to fc the phase between primary and secondary voltage is 90 so now when f is greater than fc so if i am considering the primary only to be upper part so you will be more clear when i'll be discussing about the phase so let's consider the restrictions here so when f is greater than fc the phase of the upper part the phase between primary and secondary voltage is less than 90 now if f is less than fc the phase is greater than 90 so now we'll see how this will affect our calculations so now when f is equal to fc when f is equal to fc i said the phase between the primary and secondary voltage is 90 so the primary is primary voltage is v in secondary voltage here i am taking to be v l1 so now this is my secondary so now i hope you are clear that whenever i have different frequencies the phase changes so now i am considering the first case when f is equal to fc the primary and the secondary so if i am drawing the primary here so if this is my v in at the 90 degree i'll be having v l1 so now i said the phase between primary and secondary is 90 so secondary i was taking vl1 so phase between v in and vl1 is 90 so now if i talk about the phase of vl2 the phase of vl2 is 180 degree shifted from the phase of vl1 so this is vl2 now if i draw the summation of both of them so here at this diode i am getting v in plus vl1 so the output would be this v in plus vn vl1 and here 
एट दिस डायोड आई हैव द आउटपुट वी इन प्लस वी एल टू सो दिस इज वी इन दिस इज वी एल टू देयर समेशन वुड बी दिस सो द आउटपुट वुड बी दिस सो नाउ एट हेयर द वी आउटपुट वुड बी बिकॉज दिस इज 180 एटी डिग्री शिफ्टेड पोर्शन सो इट वुड बी सो आई एम टेकिंग इट टू बी वी नॉट वन एंड वी नॉट टू दिस इज वी नॉट वन एंड दिस इज वी नॉट टू सो इट वुड बी वी नॉट वन माइनस वी नॉट टू सो नाउ आई कैन से आई हैव फाउंड आउट वी नॉट वन सो वी नॉट वन इज वी इन प्लस वी एल वन सो वी इन प्लस वी एल वन रिप्रेजेंट वी नॉट वन This represents v in plus v l two. V in plus v l two was v not two. So this is v not two. So now the output is v not one minus v not two. So here, if I see the phase, so here the v not one and v not two would be having the same values. So mod of v not one is equal to mod of v not two. So when I subtract v not 1 minus v not 2 is equal to 0 so when f is equal to fc the output would be v output t is 0 so now i hope you understood how i found out the output phase when the modulating signal is having frequency equal to the carrier frequency so now let's take the second case now f is greater than fc so now if i am having the modulated signal where the frequency is greater than fc so that part is coming here so let's see what would happen so now this is my v in what i said about f is greater than fc when f is greater than fc the phase between primary and secondary voltage is less than 90 so if i draw primary as vl1 so vl1 is this vl2 would be having 180 degree phase with respect to vl1 and it both of them has same amplitude so this is vl2 this is vl1 this is v in so now if i draw so this is the resultant of vl1 plus v in so resultant of v l1 plus v in was v not 1 now here if i draw the resultant so the resultant would be like this so this is v not 2 so now output voltage would be v output is equal to v not 1 minus v not 2 so from here you can see that v not 1 so v not 1 is having higher value than v not 2 it is clearly visible so i can say v not is greater than 0 so from here i can conclude that when f is equal to fc v not would be 0 when f is greater than fc v not would be greater than 0 so now let's take the third case now here f is less than fc so now again let's take this is my v in now the phase between primary and secondary voltage is greater than 90 so here the phase is greater than 90 so here the phase follows the 180 degree phase shift so if this is greater than 90 this would be lesser than 90 so this is vl1 this is vl2 so now we need to find out the resultant so resultant would be so now from here you can see this is my v not 1 this is my v not 2 and v output is equal to v not 1 minus v not 2 so v output is modulus of v not 1 minus v not 2 so you can see here reverse would happen and v not 1 is less than v not 2 so the output voltage v output is always less than 0 so when 
higher value is subtracted from the lower value because v not two is having the higher value and v not one is having the lower value. So now the output voltage would be lesser than zero. So now I hope you understood. If I have different frequencies in the modulating signal, we'll be having different output voltage. So th this different output voltage is representing my AM signal. So in AM signal, according to the message signal, the output voltage will change. So the information which was present in the frequency, now it is converted to the voltage or amplitude. So when the information which was present in the frequency, it moves to the amplitude. Now we can use the envelope detector and now we can detect our signal. So this is the procedure by which we can detect our signal through the Foster Seeley discriminator. So now we'll see its advantages. So the first advantage is that both of the tuned circuit or three tuned circuits exactly are tuned at the same frequency FC. So, so there would be no complex circuit design. No complex circuit designing would be there. So now the next advantage would be linearity is better because the information is now contained in the phase and from the phase we are extracting the information the linearity would be better because in that time we were using the resonant frequency gain versus frequency graph so that time the gain versus frequency graph was non-linear because of which the non-linearity problem was arising here we are not using that graph we are just seeing the phase and according to the phase change we are seeing our output so we can say the linearity would be much better than that case so now if i talk about the disadvantages so first is limiter cannot be used. So this is the biggest disadvantage of Foster Seeley discriminator because of which the ratio detector was invented and this is the biggest limitation which we cannot overcome. We cannot use limiter and I hope you remember limiter was used to limit the amplitude and in amplitude the noise was there so limiter can be used to remove the noise. So we cannot remove the noise because of noise there would be distortions in the output signal which we cannot remove. So this is the biggest disadvantage and the second disadvantage is that it is costly. It is having a complex circuit as well. So now here I'll be concluding my session. I hope you understood each and everything which I discussed here. If you still have any doubt in any of the portion, you can put the doubt in the comment and I'll try to resolve it as soon as possible. I hope you like this video. If you like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel and push the like button. Thank you.